here's what it's going to end up looking like and what it's going to end up doing. Basically, everything that I think I can show you, we got, uh, so we got the splitter wall, we got all the conveyors, we have loot sorting, we have a crafting chest here, we have outer dump boxes being pull pulling into inner dump boxes, we got full furnace, uh, full furnace automation as well as minimal items going out to the furnace, um, so that way like grubs can't just sit there and take it. Um, I think I already mentioned auto crafting, locker sorting, so that way uh, you know you already have kits all ready to go. Yeah, so I think I think that's pretty much the works in terms of uh, most big bases. Okay, so we're back, and yeah, I'll I'll show you guys how to make this step by step. Um, and I'll try to edit out any bits that, you know, are repetitive or redundant, uh, just to make life a little bit easier for everybody. Okay, so first things first, and again, this isn't necessarily the best way to make this, but I'm going to show you how to make it this way for the sake of simplicity, for the sake of being able to comprehend what the hell is going on. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up a splitter wall and a conveyor wall all in one. Um, so basically, you just pick a wall. I'm going to pick this one here and what you want to do is you want to get out your splitter here and you're going to stick a splitter, I'm just going to say as high up on the wall as you can, so let's pretend that was there in your base, stick this up as high on the wall as you can right in the middle and what we're going to do is for this sake I'm going to uh, I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap so you can see what's going on, but usually I'd shove these right next to each other, so I'll leave a little bit of a gap and what we're going to do is we're going to take the top one and we're going to do this. So this one goes to that one, this one goes to that one, this one goes to that one. Beautiful. And then what we're going to do is we're going to send this one to this one, this one to this one, and this one to this one. And then I'm going to do that for the other three. Beautiful. So this is our splitter wall. Basically we have three times nine, so 27 different possible ways that we can pull from this splitter wall. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to compact this just so that way we have lots of room. All right, beautiful. So now that it's nice and compact, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bunch of conveyors all the way around this guy. And again, I like to keep them nice and compact. So I'm going to do it as such. And I can usually fit two down here at the bottom. However, sometimes depending on how big of a base or how big of a group I'm playing in, what I'll actually do is I'll actually have another row of splitters. But anyways, for now, I'll just do a bunch of conveyors. All right, perfect. Cool, so now that we have that set up, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up, I guess we'll just do three loot rooms for now, just for the sake of uh, sake of demonstration. So let me get those set up. All right, perfect. Now that I have the loot room set up, I'm gonna take the storage adapter on each and put one on each uh, box. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, perfect. Now that I have a storage adapter on every single box, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out my combiners. Now. Unlike the splitter wall, I will split up the uh, the combiners. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one combiner for two boxes at the moment anyways. Boom, boom. Alright, and now that I have two combiners per box, I'm going to set these to green. Just so that way it's a little bit easier for you guys to follow. And I'm going to send the output of every box into a combiner and then I'm also going to combine the combiners as such and send the final one off to a combiner that I'm going to put right here. It doesn't really matter where it goes but this is just basically going to be my main combiner I guess. So I'll take this guy And there we go. There's one loot room done. Now to do the other three, or the other two, sorry.
Alrighty, and we're back. And also, I just added an additional combiner here, mainly because I always want there to be at least one empty, so that way I can put in more if I need to. So yeah, always feel free to, you know, have an extra one there. I wouldn't, I w otherwise I would have had to have filled all three of these up, and then I would have no room for expansion without running another pipe. So yeah, I put in another one there. All right, perfect. So now that we have all of the boxes connecting into the combiner and the combiner going into our splitter wall, the next step is, well, I guess we need to power everything too. So if you need a, uh, a guide on how to do like big group clan uh, electricity, I do have another video on that. I'm not gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna set up a little thing in behind here and get all these things powered. I guess I'll show this part here for anyone who doesn't know. Again, the power is coming in at this uh, very top one up here. But uh, yeah, you just go pass through input, pass through input, pass through input, pass through, through input, pass through input in order to power all these. And again, you need to make sure you're getting the power input and not the turn off or turn on or filter pass, filter pa fail, whatever. It's the pass through and the power in. That's what you need to power all of these guys. Okay, so now that that's done, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to take our pipe tool, and I'm gonna make this red. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the input of all of the conveyors and we're gonna shove them somewhere into our splitter wall. So we have all, we have 27 different slots here. So let's get that one in there, that one in there, that one in there, that one in there, etc. Etc. All right, perfect. Now that we have all of these going somewhere into our splitter wall, the next step is to actually start sorting things. Now, before I do that, though, I am going to want to create some dump chests somewhere. I just noticed that this guy isn't getting powered. Hang in there. There we go. My bad. Anyways. So yeah, we are gonna to wanna to set up some dump chests somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you guys a little neat trick. Um, let's pretend that this box is outside of our base and this box, or let's say this series of boxes, is inside of our base. So attach some of the storage adapters to these guys. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, always make sure that this box gets sucked into these two boxes. And then these two boxes are going to go into our splitter wall. So let me show that really quickly. What we'll do here is I'll take the industrial out of this box and shove it into the industrial in of this box here. The industrial out of this box is actually just going to run directly into one of the inputs over here. There we go. All right, now for the sake of making this a little bit easier to look at, I guess, because I could run the pipes to one of those conveyors instead of putting a, a conveyor here for this exact same purpose. But this conveyor here is going to be the one that will always be on, and the input is going to be the output of this chest, and the output of it is going to be in the input of this chest. What this does is no matter what it is that I decide to put in here, it will always get sucked out and put into these two boxes. So that way that box will always remain empty. These boxes, however, if I'm not filtering for something properly, it, they'll end up actually being left in, this, in these boxes. So these boxes are nice to be able to look at every now and then and be like, oh, there's a couple of objects here that I'm not filtering for. And you can either rectify that or move them manually. It's up to you. But anyways, let's continue on over here. So. We have our conveyor wall. And what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna send the outputs of all of these conveyors into a box, a box of your choosing. I'm gonna choose the blue in order to signify that it's coming out of a conveyor. Um, usually I don't really bother with the colors, but anyways, yeah. So I'm gonna run as many of these as I possibly can. So be right back. Alrighty, there we go. As you can see, this piping job is very hideous, but 
to be honest with you, after you've done this so many times, you really stop caring. So all of these are going off into boxes. And now what we're going to do is we're going to filter for things. So basically what you do is you come over here and you pick, uh, pick one of these. So this is going to a box, I don't know which one. But let's, for example, say we want to send weapons into this box. You can be specific, more specific. Again, this is just an example, so I'm gonna keep things relatively simple. But I wanna send weapons to that box. I wanna send ammo to this box. There's a fruit fly in front of my face. I'm going to send clothing into this box. And I guess the other stuff, how about we send, and this stuff I'm gonna manually go for. I'm going to try to get satchels times explosives. Yeah, let's do that. Let's make things a little bit more complicated. So let's send satchels, explosives, get all the gunpowder over there as well. Let's get some rockets. Um, see an MLRS there as well, perfect. And tiny explosive C4s. All right, cool. Let's filter for all those and we'll send all those to whatever box these ones are hooked up to. And then the other ones we're gonna do, I guess we'll do, let's see here, let's do uh, stone, etc., etc. This one will be wood, wood and maybe some charcoal. Perfect, this one will be sulfur and sulfur ore. And this one will be metal or metal fragments, high quality, high quality metal ore. Excellent, okay, so those are those ones. And these ones will be, I don't know, let's see. Um, let's make these uh, tools, uh, construction and electricity and traps and this one will be I don't know let's make it some natural stuff like uh, cloth um, low-grade food to the naturals like leather maybe like diesel um, animal fat uh, yeah, bone fragments, I guess. Bone frags, there we go. And then this one will be, geez, what else do we have left that we could possibly do? Um, medical, oh, components. I don't have a components chest yet, so components. And for example, for components, I like to have my cameras in there as well. Uh, yep, cameras, do targeting computers and um, what are they called again, fuses. Get my fuses and I also like to put my scrap in there as well. All right, perfect. So next thing I'm gonna do before I turn all these on is I'm gonna fill up this box full of, well, all that different stuff. And yeah, we'll see if it all goes to the right spot. Okay, we did it. So we jammed everything full. This chest is full, this chest is full, this chest is backed up because these two chests are full, so I can't even suck anything in. All right, let's see how we did. So I'm gonna turn on all those conveyors that I set up to do various different things. I'm hearing them going, so that's good. Are you on? You don't have anything, right? Yeah, okay, it's just these two. All right, well, it looks like they're working. Awesome, I didn't even check to see which chests do what, so let's go take a look real quick. Looks like this is our weapons chest, this looks like our ammo chest, this looks like our explosives and stuff chest. Oh, interesting. I know why that's happening, it's because this is being pulled twice, so we're gonna cover that in a minute. And that's our clothing chest, that's good. There's our sulfur, excellent. There's all of our metals and stuff, perfect. There's our wood, great. There's our stone, awesome. I'm pretty sure I also selected uh, charcoal, so let's check to make sure that that's going too. There it goes. Perfect, so our charcoal is being pushed. Let's check over here. Ooh, okay, so we've got tools going, and these ones aren't working. So let's see if we can troubleshoot why these guys might not be working. I'm hoping it's not a server issue. The server sometimes just has issues. <laughs> with various different things. 
Um, oh, I'm going to put down a TC here, too. There we go. Let's see here. So industrial in. Comes on the way down. You're coming down here. You're going into the splitter. Let's see here. Is there anything? Is there any issue here with the splitter? Did I not do the splitter right? Industrial out, industrial out. Where's this one? There's this industrial out at. How about where's your industrial in? Yep, you're looking like you're going to the right spot. You have an industrial in going into the right spot. Yeah, and you have an industrial in going in there as well. Okay, cool. So the splitter should be working fine. Tools and the like. Ah! Okay, well, there's this. You don't have an output, it seems. Traps and the like, so let's fix that real quick. Am I on the right color? I'll try to keep it as consistent as possible. Industrial output. Now, where was I pulling this from? Okay, so one of these is supposed to be tools, and I must have it plugged into a different one. Not these ones. You're plugged in. What are you supposed to be filtering? Tools. Tools was filtering, so that's good. You. You. Oh, that's why. I forgot to plug you guys in. But you are plugged in. Oh, you're being plugged into these ones. Well, that's weird. Definitely not what we need. So, get these guys going. Get you going. Come down here. Try that again, and you must be wrong as well. Make sure I got them all in. Large wood, large wood, large wood. Let's drill out and turn these two on, because those ones weren't even on. There we go. So it should be filtering now. You guys don't have anything, so. I must have just brain farted when I plugged those ones in. All right, let's take another check back. All right, so what are we missing here? Ooh, take a look at this. Okay, so we are missing. Actually, I think these are getting sucked away. Yes, they are. So those are fine. Um, we are missing crude oil. Large med and med medic stuff. Okay, no worries. So let's see. I want crude oil probably going in this one with the rest of my naturals. So that should start pulling. There we go. Already getting gone. And medical stuff. Now where would I want to put medical stuff? Well, let's do an example here. So I want my medical stuff to go into a... Uh, if it's going to be a large group, it's probably going to want to be a relatively big chest. So let's do that. Get one chest here. And we'll toss it down here. Excellent. Stick one of these guys on it. And the input on this chest is going to be... Which one? You, I guess. Let's do you. You're going to take medical. I want all the medical going into there. And the output is going to go into one of my... Uh... Oh, I'm all down to one. So I'm going to want to put down another one. So let's get one of those up. And output of you can go into... The... Oh, I want to keep it green. Sorry. Output of you can go into here. And you are going to come down and go into the output of my medical box. There we go, so it feeds back into the system. All right, and there's all our meds, perfect. And that'll slowly get sucked away. I think I put in uh, put in a little bit too many. I have like 100 there, but uh, whatever. All right, cool, and this guy out here is empty because it all got sucked into here, so that's great. Yes, okay, so what to do next? Well, let's do our TC, so let's pretend we want to do up our TC, so that way our TC will never end up being empty. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one on top of this, and this time we're going to do something a little bit different, but very similar to what you've seen. So we're going to leave the industrial out empty. The reason why is because, as you've seen with the MLRS rockets, which should just kind of be flashing around here any moment now. There we go, it's gone. It goes into the ammo chest if you're curious, and then it comes back over here. So it just keeps switching between the two. You can't push and pull two things separately. So in this case, MLRS rockets are being pulled separately and being pushed separately. So we can't technically have that um, in this specific setup. Uh, you can do it with things like wood and stone and whatnot if you want to have like two different boxes. But anyways, yeah. So. What we can't do is feed this back into the system. So what we, but that's okay because it's our TC and we don't care. So for our TC, 
Let's take the input and we'll shove you. Why are you why is my scroll wheel scrolling? All right, so you're gonna come over here, over here, and into one of these. Let's pick you, and you are going to take, let's say, wood. You're gonna take some stone. You're gonna take some metal frags, and again, I'm filling up the TC here. Metal fragments, and you're going to take, what else? What else would I want? I guess high quality. High quality metal, there we go. And let's say, for example, I only wanna put in a maximum of 100 wood, this is ridiculous, but 100 wood, 100 metal frags, 100 whatever, and 100 uh, high quality metal. So, let's turn that on. And let's see if it works. Oh, well, it's obviously going to be a little bit weird with that, but try again. There we go. It's looking like it's working. Excellent. Fills up with exactly what we wanted there. And again, I was using the... Uh, the max value there in order to tell it to say hey put in a max amount of that that's going to come into play later when we start getting into furnaces all right perfect so now we have a base that is technically auto sorting let's fix the issue with the mlrs rockets the simple fix is going to be to find this one here and get rid of mlrs rockets that will stop them from constantly uh, switching back and forth uh, there is a longer fix what i could do is I could put uh, two conveyors in a series and basically say, hey, you're gonna pull all of this stuff and you're gonna peel off of it. But that's a little bit too much work for this. Usually when it comes to things like explosives and all that, we usually have a separate box somewhere that we fill up with all of our boom. And uh, that box doesn't typically feed back into the system, but it can be very nice to feed it back into the system because later on, I might cover an advanced system which will actually suck everything out of this base and into a different base. So that's why it's nice to have everything feeding back into the system here. But anyways, so perfect. So we got this going off, um, filling up our TC. Next what we're going to do is we're going to set up some furnaces. That was, that was not worth doing a big reveal for. Anyways, alright cool. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to electric all these things up and uh, we'll get started. All right, perfect. Now that all these things are uh, powered on, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, industrial piping tool. We're basically just going to connect all these together. So this will be our first input. So we'll go out, in, out, in, out. All right. Also, what we're going to do is we're going to take the output of this guy, shove it in the input of this guy, same with this guy here. And this is going to be our big out. This big out is going to go, I should actually uh, turn it green, so that way it makes a little more sense with the rest of my coloring scheme here and we're going to shove it back into the system all right cool so next thing that we're going to do is we're going to specify one of these conveyors and we're going to tell this conveyor that we are going to push into the system various different types of ores so let's pick uh, i guess just you guys you right here so I'll make this one red or no sorry blue blue one will come over here and go into the first system here and this one's going to be taking metal ore, sulfur ore, and high quality metal ore. Now before, I know some of you are saying, well, what about wood, for example, and stuff like that. Hang in there. I'm going to show you what I like to do for wood. So, there we go. Awesome. And we're going to send off all of our ores off. Now, another thing some of you might also be saying is, wait a minute. Auckland, didn't you just uh, didn't you just say that you can't send off duplicates? So, for example, here we got sulfur ore, and here we got metal ore. So, why is it that we're sending these off over here? Well, here's the reason why: is because furnaces are special. There's your answer. Furnaces, it's okay to push and pull at the same time. Um, it doesn't really matter. They just kind of both work. So, works out for us. So, as we can see here. All of our different kinds of metals appear to be cooking, and they also appear to be cooking out here as well. Now, the thing that we want to deal with is going to be wood. Now, here's the thing. I could tell it to send wood, and I could do some stuff with minimums and, and, and buffers and all that kind of stuff, but it gets a little bit weird. What I think is the best way to do it is to basically have a wood sacrifice um, box. So I'll take a wood sacrifice box, I'll put it over here. Any wood that goes into this box is going to end up being burnt in a furnace. 
Um, so this is also useful if you're trying to make charcoal as well. All right, and now that we have our little box with the little thing here, I had to think about this for a couple seconds, so I apologize. We're going to put down a combiner here, and the combiner is going to take the output of our ore that we were just sending over here. Take the output of the ore. I should turn that to blue. My bad. I'll do that real quick. So I take the output of the ore, and the output of this box is actually going to steal one of these conveyors. I'm going to send it into one of the conveyors, and then the output of the conveyor is also going to go in here. So this conveyor is going to be the one that's going to send off wood. So I'm just going to tell it to send all the wood, because again, we're just sending all of the wood from this box into the system. And I'm not, I'm not even going to have an input for this, guys. So There's going to be output of box into the conveyor, which is going to suck out all the wood, combine it with the ore, and put them into the furnaces. Okay. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to do is take a look here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Okay, I'm going to think that we're actually only going to want to put out a maximum of 12. Put out a maximum of 12 of these each. And let's also put out a maximum of, I think, eight we'll probably do. Eight wood. Let's see if that works. Here's what I'm going to do I'm gonna dump all this wood out dump all this wood out. Let's see if it fills up properly. Alright, sorry about that guys. I just unnecessarily confused myself. I was like, why isn't there no wood being sucked to the first? And I was like, oh wait, right, I didn't fill this thing up with wood. Um, <laughs> so that would make, uh, that would make sense. Okay, perfect. So, there we go. Now let's see how this works. So this should be putting in eight wood, eight wood, excellent, filling them both up with eight, which means actually these could probably be quite a bit lower, but we'll test this out anyway. So, Fill it up with eight wood, turn it on, fill it up with that, turn it on. Excellent. Excellent. Alright. And now what we're going to do, I'm also going to fill these guys up with a little bit more of these raw resources. So, excellent. Fill all the dump chests up, those will get sorted into their chests, and then sucked back through the splitter wall, and out through these conveyors, and into all these furnaces. And let's take a look. So this guy now, here I'm going to take all this out, because what I want to see is if it only puts in the minimum that we're asking for here. I think we said 12 each, right? Let's take a look. You're going to fill up with something? There we go. There we go. Perfect. I'd be willing to bet we'll probably go quite a bit lower here. So let's do, instead of, uh, let's do two each. Two, two, two. And you could probably be, I think four is like the most you're going to want. So yeah, I'm slowly sucking up the wood, my sacrificial wood chest. And take that away. It's working now. Are we wasting a little bit of time? I think we're wasting a little bit of time. Yes, we are. I think four is the magic number. I think. Let's try that again. So let's do four. Four, four. Four. Let's see. Yeah. If you, I bet you high qual can probably be two because it takes a lot longer to burn. Maybe it's maybe it's three, two, one. Oh no! Look, it went out with four. It didn't have enough wood in time. Okay, cool. So wood needs to be five. I'd say wood should be five. High qual can be two, metal ore can be three, and sulfur can remain at four because it seems to burn very quickly. And there we go. As it gets cooked, it gets sucked away, and then more get added. And then yeah, if you had any grub come into your compound, you'd, they'd really have to be persistent in order to uh, in order to get all this stuff. But anyways, at least all of our stuff's finally auto cooking, so that's nice. Okay, so. What else are we going to want to do here? So we got the TC done, we got the loot room sorting. I guess the next good thing is going to be lockers. So let's get lockers done up. So I'm going to put down a couple lockers here, just give me a second. I think for the sake of simplicity, we'll probably just do the one. Anyways, okay, cool. So here's what we're going to do. You have to have a conveyor per locker. I really do wish that you could set like a maximum of three and just be able to daisy chain them, kind of like you do with furnaces, but it just doesn't work, unfortunately. You can't do this and then have it work. And also, as you know, we can't take this and send it back into the system. And the reason why is because, uh, well, we're, we'd be pulling duplicates. So we would create an infinite loop. So anyways, we're gonna have one conveyor per locker. So I'll take the output of this conveyor, for example. 
Oh, we need to make it blue, sorry. Get the output of this container over here. We'll shove into the input of this one. And let's, for example, let's, let's take a set. So let's say we want a hazmat suit. We're gonna want a Thompson. We're gonna want 128, whoops. Pistol bullets, pistol bullets, there we go. We're gonna want 128 pistol bullets. One Thompson, one hazmat suit. Um, let's say meds, syringe, sorry. Syringe, we're gonna have three of them go in. And what else, what else could we possibly want? Um, maybe some pumpkins? Like heal up in the beginning? Let's put some pumpkins. Five pumpkins. Excellent. Send it off, see what happens. You gonna fill up properly? There we go. Not too shabby. Not exactly in the right order, but not really much you can do about that. Did I say did I say three meds? I thought I said six meds. Did I get that wrong? Oh I did say three meds. Sorry, six meds. Yeah. Try that again. There we go. Perfect. Alright, awesome. So it looks like it's auto filling, so that's nice. Um, and yeah, we can also do the same thing. So, let's, for example, we want to send out a full kit. Alrighty, there we go. One, 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 twenty-eight, three, one. All right, cool. I think that's everything. I'm gonna have to look at it to know exactly. Let's see what we got. Will it fill it up? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Oh, we don't have any high snow, snow walls. That's probably why. Uh, those aren't being added, so I'll add those into the dump chest here. So I'll take a couple of these, toss them into here, and those will be sorted into one of these chests. This is the uh, construction one, or the one that, yeah, there it is. There's four of them. I know I think I spawned in more than four, and I'm guessing the rest of them already got sucked in. There we go. There's our three. All right, cool. Perfect. We're good to go. All right, so the next thing that we might want to do... Well, we could set up another one there, but I think you guys get the point on that. All right, guys, I'm trying to think what else. What else? Could, oh, okay, 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 I got one. So, so the, the other thing that's, that I really enjoy doing is, because this is one of the neat things about having this, is that I didn't, I didn't set this up, unfortunately, to be able to do this, because uh, sometimes loot rooms are closed off. Um, so unfortunately, I can't add this now. But anyways, if you have closed off loot rooms or loot rooms that are accessible by Windows, you can actually just close them up and leave them closed up. And what you can do is have it so that way everything that you could ever possibly need gets pushed to a box uh, that usually that I just keep in like a crafting room. But for now, I'll just like put it like this. Take a box, put the box right here underneath that. Stick one of these on. And this box is going to receive every single possible crafting material that we're going to need in order to craft things. Now, because we're going to be sending things to this box that, again, are automatically being sorted, we're going to have to make it so that way this box doesn't go back into the system, but that's okay. So, let's get that set up. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these three, these three conveyors here, I think we'll do, and I'm going to set up a combiner just for, again, it's a very messy wiring job, but I, I don't really care because I want you guys to understand what I'm doing. Uh, and unfortunately, making it clean is kind of impossible. So anyways, I'm going to take these three outputs here because we're going to have to do a lot of different materials and shove it into the input of this box. So these three conveyors here are going to be... Uh, because again, like conveyors can only have a maximum of 12 items in each. So I'm going to fill out these three conveyors with all of the possible um, things that we could possibly want to craft with, and then we'll take a look at the chest when we're done. Alright, you know what's neat guys is I actually managed to, I think I managed to get everything that I'd want in one of these chests in two. So let's, let's see how it goes. So we got all our basic stuff here. So you got cloth, low grade, metal frags, gunpowder, sulfur, rope. Uh, propane, uh, a couple of components, and all the rest are basically components. So let's see if those two pretty much cover everything. I think they would. I think that's everything that you'd ever want to craft with. Uh, it's going to keep pulling more in. But basically, yeah, so this gets full with uh, things that you want to craft with. If you take it, for example, it'll just refill it back up again for you. And yeah, it's pretty much everything you'd ever need to, to uh, craft with. You've got some 
if you need to research, and again, this will just load back up the moment that it's good. Yeah, so there's a box for you there, and luckily I managed to only get it done with two conveyors, and I think I still have one slot left on one. Yeah, so there's still one other thing if you can think of that you'd want to craft with. And if there's more than that, again, you can just use three, but um, yeah, managed to get it done in two, so that's nice. Okay, cool. So, what else could I possibly want to do? There was one other thing. Um, let me think about it real quick. Right, auto crafting. I'm an idiot. Okay, cool. So, if you want to do auto crafting, what I would recommend is let's take down, let's get a workbench in, get level two. Uh, we'll do, I guess, just right here. Put an industrial crafter on it. If you're curious, by the way, you can put two. If you didn't know, one up there, one down there. So both will work. So, and actually, do you know what? Since I have this uh, crate for crafting, and since if, say for example, I only had like 50 cloth left in the entire base, it would actually end up going into here. So you can make a choice if you want to send it from a conveyor over here, or if you want to send it from here, but I guess I'll just send it from, uh, from here. So I'm gonna send the industrial output um, I'll just send it into this conveyor over here, because why not? There you go, send it to that conveyor. And then the output will go into my industrial crafter. And what I'll do is I will tell it to send, and this is like your bog standard stuff in the beginning. So like, uh, I want it to send animal fat, I want it to send three, I want it to send cloth, maximum of one, I want it to send charcoal, maximum of three, no, 30, sorry, why am I, why am I thinking that, and then sulfur, oops, sulfur, and send 20 in there, so that also means that over here, I have a spot for that last slot, and I want to send some charcoal, oh, and I'm also going to want to send animal fat, oh, right, okay, never mind, so this, so, so yeah, this won't work in regards to this box because I need to send out three. Well, crap. Okay, no worries. We'll just, uh, we'll take it from, we'll take it from over here. There we go. No worries. All right, cool. So animal fat, cloth, charcoal, and sulfur. There we go. And let's check this, making sure I'm not sending that over. Yeah, okay, perfect. So, now this guy here, we need to put in the blueprint for it. So just one second while I get those. Well, this is embarrassing. I don't actually know how to, uh, how to spawn in blueprints, so uh, let me just uh, research these two things real quick. Yeah, right, perfect. I'm gonna take the scrap and just throw it back into the system somewhere. Oh, something that I don't think I really ever mentioned, by the way. Did you guys know that every single chest is a dump chest in this system? I, I can't believe I didn't point this out, but every chest is a dump chest. Um, these are here because this is where any like things that aren't being filtered properly will will end up going. So for example, I have a feeling that this probably isn't going to end up getting filtered properly. So let's take a look. Because it's not it's not a construction item, it's not a trap, it's not anything else. So this will end up just kind of sitting there um, in, in these uh, in these two jump dump chests. Um, but anyways, yeah, you can decide what you want to do with your, your boxes, I guess. I think I'd recommend just doing that. But anyways, um, yeah, so every chest is a dump chest, so people can go around and just be like, oh, I'll throw that in there. Actually, that's where it's going to end up being. Uh, oh, I'm going to throw that in the component's chest, and then it will end up being auto-sorted into the right chest. I can't believe that I didn't mention that, and actually, sorry, this is also an item as well, so that won't work. But this will, for example. That's an electrical item, which will end up getting sucked into here. All right, cool. So let's go over here. We're going to throw in our two blueprints on this guy. And the output, where do we want all the things that it crafts to go? You got it, right back into the system again. Uh, I'm going to feel bad doing this. Uh, let's add another one here. Da -da 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 -da. I think you're supposed to be green, aren't you? Colors. All right, cool. All right, so we got the blueprints in there. We got the input and the output. And this thing also needs to be powered, so let me go do that real quick. All right, moment of truth. Perfect! Doesn't take a lot of power to run this thing, does it? Just, just a single branch, pop it down, you're good to go. Alright, awesome! So now what we want to do is we want to send these things over to it, and let's see if it all works. Let's take a look. So we're sending all this stuff off into this guy. There it is. 
Awesome. It's crafting the gunpowder. I'm noticing we don't have any cloth. I bet you the cloth is in here. Yes, it is. And I bet you I probably only spawned in a hundred of that cloth. So let me get a thousand. And we'll put that in our drop chest. Drop chest will sort it over into the naturals chest over here. And I bet you this guy's going to end up getting sucked off into here. There we go. Now we got gunpowder and we got... Uh, um, low grade, all being auto crafted. Which is nice. No, I think it's because maybe that's in that order. Craft that first, I guess. Yeah, there we go. Alright, cool. So there we go. There's auto crafting set up with some basic stuff. Again, you can get this to get more complicated. Um, normally, what I would do instead of trying to make this too complicated is just toss another crafter on top. So, for example, if you want to do ammo or anything like that, set it up to a timer. And basically, what you do is you say, okay, for the next 70 or like a minute, I want you to craft this many bullets and then output it into a chest of some kind. And then you'd be able to see, oh, okay, so if I run this for 60 minutes, it's going to craft this amount of uh, this amount of bullets. So that's usually what I recommend you do, but you do you. Okay, cool. So the final thing, the final thing that I'll show you is, well... I, I guess I'll show you what I guess I'll show you a way you can move everything in case you get raided. Um, if that sounds moderately interesting. So okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Alrighty, here we go. So I want you to pretend that these string of chests are in a separate base somewhere. Um, and basically, what's going to end up happening here is that, let's pretend we want to make it so that way if this wall here gets raided, then everything in this entire base gets sucked off into another base. Now, you can obviously only want it to suck off specific things, if you choose to do so. I'm basically leaving it blank so it'll suck everything out. Um, yeah. Alright, so let's give it a go. Let's give it a test. So, do this. That gets turned on. And let's see what happens. Let's see if everything's, everything's getting moved. Alright, so we lost all that. That's all gone. That's all gone. What about our boom? Did we lose all our boom? All our boom. Well, gunpowder slowly getting sucked out. Ammo slowly getting sucked out. Pretty much anything if it's a, if it's a one stack gets sucked out instantly. That stuff ends up staying. Um, the stuff in our TC will end up staying. That's all slowly getting sucked out. Anyways, yeah. So there you go. So wall gets raided and whoop, off it goes. So here's the thing. I don't want to turn this into like an electrical lesson, um, but basically what it's doing is, again, this is quite messy, but um, I'm peeling off some power in order to power this system. This is a nice way to do it, but whatever. Um, basically what I'm saying is, hey, this branch here, I want you to always be setting the reset. This one here goes to a separate branch. The separate branch is sending the power, the rest of the power out into the uh, memory cell, which is getting ready to power the thing, but it won't do it yet because this was originally going to a blocker and the blocker's output was coming back into the set. That's what it was doing, and then once the blocker gets destroyed, the set is no longer being set, and therefore the reset will take over because it's constantly being powered, and it will send it off. Um, it will send it off into the conveyor that sucks everything out slowly. And as you can see, the base is pretty much empty. But the important thing is that most of the stuff ends up getting sucked out, and then they'll end up coming over the chest and be like, "Oh, what's happening?" Uh, I'm, I'm just kidding. They'll probably just uh, they probably won't do much about it. Um, or they'll just go over and raid your other base because let's be honest people bring uh, plenty of boom in order to raid big bases So yeah, there we go. That's basically uh, That's basically everything that I think I can show you we got uh, So we got the splitter wall. We got all the conveyors. We have loot sorting. We have a crafting chest here we have outer dump boxes being pull pulling into inner dump boxes we got full furnace, uh, full furnace automation as well as minimal items going out to the furnace, um, so that way like grubs can't just sit there and take it. Um, I think I already mentioned auto crafting, locker sorting, 
So that way, uh, you know, you already have kits all ready to go. Yeah, so I think, I think that's pretty much the works in terms of uh, most big bases. One thing that I want to cover really quickly is that, let's say, for example, and you might have already thought of this, what happens if I have two boxes of, uh, two boxes of stone, for example? What do I do? Well, what will end up happening is that these boxes will end up kind of getting full of stone, right? These are, again, are your kind of overflow boxes, um, hopefully, preferably not that one. So when that happens, that's the one manual thing that you're going to have to do. You can set up a circuit to auto-pull stone out, okay? That is possible, um, and I implore you to figure out how to do that. It's just, uh, it just involves taking the output and uh, peeling it off with a splitter, and then basically one splitter pulls and one splitter pushes back into the system and then the other splitter goes to another conveyor that pulls out excess stone into a bunch of other chests. That's how it works. Again, this base is so automated at this point that like, if you have a bunch of stone, it's not going to be much just to you take it out and then throw it into some spare chest that you have somewhere, right? Like, we're, like it's minimal effort at this point. Um, so anyways, I think you guys are all set. So, thanks very much for watching this. I also pray to God that my computer had enough space to store this video because this took an absurd amount of time um, out of my evening. Anyways, okay, awesome. Have a good one, everyone. Good luck in Rust, and thanks for watching. One thing I forgot to mention after I ended this video was that there is the option here to, uh, to move blueprints in and out of your crafters. Again, I prefer just using another crafter in order to you know, get things done, especially if you have like another tier two just sitting somewhere in your base to handle, like, you know, some of the basic stuff like ammo and whatnot. Um, but anyways, if you did want to do this, basically what you'd have to do is set up different conveyors up to different switches in order to um, move specific blueprints that you want in again with conveyors and move other blueprints out again with another conveyor. And you're creating a relatively complicated and more importantly power hungry system in order to uh, to automate this guy. So I usually just leave these alone. Um, again, keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid, and just set up another, uh, just set up another one on top, so. Oh, uh, yeah, there was one other thing I wanted to mention too. I'm sure a bunch of people will end up just saying, hey, why didn't you just, when it comes to your various different loot rooms, why instead of having this one big nasty splitter wall over here, why didn't you set in every loot room? You'd have your two combiners for your to get to get your four chests, and also have two splitters going out as well. So that is an option, um, and I, I have done that a couple of times. Uh, where instead you end up doing something like this, and then these are the splitters, and then you have your conveyors in your loot room as well. It just depends on how much room you have, right? That, 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 that's purely it. It's how much room you have, how much you want to run the wiring around. This is a little bit nicer because you don't end up having to run um, to run a hose or a conveyor pipe from every single conveyor back to the loot room. So you have four pipes going over. Instead, with this one, you'd have one splitter pipe going over and one combiner pipe going back, right? So it makes it a fair bit cleaner if you do it that way instead. Um, again, I taught it this way just because it's so much simpler to look at. Um, and to understand than it is to have the splitters going every which way in addition to the combiners going back and forth. Um, yeah, so I, I, I compromised and I made it so that way the combiners go into the loot rooms, but you can also have the splitters go and the conveyors go into the loot rooms as well and then just wire everything up that way. Totally an option. Feel free to do that. As you get better at doing this and you get, and you get more repetitions in, this might end up being the preferred way to do it. And then when you have your, uh, when you go back to your splitter wall, it'll actually be pretty clean because what you're gonna end up with is like a splitter here and then you got one, two, three loot rooms and then a splitter here, one, two, three loot rooms. And then you just keep adding splitters as you, as you need them, basically, as opposed to plopping them all down there immediately to be used. And then you can, again, fill up the other side with a couple of conveyors if you need to pull everything um, out. So yeah, 